Hey, has anybody seen Ernie? I heard he went on a homicidal killing spree in the name of the matriarchy, and, you know, killing sprees are normally my thing. Wanted to talk to him about that. All I know is that he took my rock. Was it the one I made cannon? Fuck. How could you let him take the cannon rock? Guys, can I have a line? No, go sit in the corner. Not until I get to show off my sexy Norwegian accent. You some Canadian. Cool. Now give me my rock. I'm sorry, your rock? I'm the one who made it canon. It's clearly my rock. But it played chess and hockey with me and everything. No one cares. I'm sorry, but how the hell did he get in here? Power of an ancient artifact knows the orb of chaos, creating a distortion in the space-time continuum. I'm really starting to think my storyline is a bit convoluted. More so than the Kingdom Hearts plot. Look, whatever, this intro is getting too long and Berg's gonna complain about it. I found this video while I was on my killing spree. Still need to talk to you about that, by the way. Shut up! Anyway, it was so bad it made me blow up a hospital. Good thing we didn't show that then. Would've gotten repetitive. See Boon Cannon 14. You shameless fucking shell. Boonslayer.spreadshirt.com gentlemen allow me to fuck you you're already taking over the whole goddamn video okay so alexander keyford he's a guy who is known for reviewing cartoons and video games from time to time but in general he's a pretty shite one at that for apparently my third video on alex he reviewed an episode of whatever happened to robot jones the episode in question is called growth spurts my face is in excruciating pain I don't understand how that's even possible when I'm a robot. You'll get used to it. Is Unicron your bitch? Well, obviously. Let's get started before Ernie punches me in the face again. <laughs> Too late! This is working. This is Deep Dish Unit 18 of 34. Eight of my brothers have been destroyed by the crash. Good news is, the star slamming experiment was a success. Bad news, we've lost the Cosby Comet. But we will survive, we will still broadcast, and we will still look for Mr. Captain. I'm currently malfunctioning. Okay, that's how much of a computer we have right now. Alright, begin the transmission. Oh, so that's why it sounds like as if you were quote-unquote moving within my last commentary on you. You were trying to do stuff after rebooting. Too bad that with this intro here, I have new questions forming in my mind. Seriously, can you at least try to bring up a previously on Deep Dish reviews or something so that the audience, as well as myself, can at least understand as to what the hell is going on? Can I just say that the intro has next to nothing to do with the review at hand? Okay, so we have him rebooting and mentioning some clones, and it gets dropped like flies under bug spray. Like trying to connect something plot-wise with the review. So, here's the closest to any sort of context I got out of this entire thing. After the star slamming experiment that gets no explanation whatsoever and really just sounds like you're making celestial bodies fuck, there was a crash of you and your android buddies, and eight of you fucking died in that... somehow. And then you rebooted and are malfunctioning, even though nowhere in the video do you show any actual visual or audible signs of this malfunction. Save for a slight little snicker in this intro, some malfunction. Of course, this is somehow related to the computer also being fried? What, do you have to be connected to the mainframe in order to operate? And that's not even the best part. The best part is that none of this plot is spoken of after this to any extent whatsoever. You know what that makes it? Pointless fucking filler in an attempt to increase your viewer retention! Even though this would bore any viewer half to death. It's not that we're against pre-video skits, look what we did in this video. We're against skits that have zero effort put into them and don't add anything. It's like you binge watch that guy with the glasses videos all day, thought to put an opening skit in, but didn't understand why those guys have skits in their videos. 
Also, Wei did not be robotic enough to even pass off as a robot. I mean, how do you do it? You sound like you just got out of bed for crying out loud. And slight nitpick, but clean your room. That's just gross. All of this, and we haven't even gotten to the review yet. Hell, it'll be another 53 seconds anyway, because you have some pointless calibration clip that looks like it's just an old piece of media you just pulled off of some archive site. Oh, hi, ripping off pan pizza. How are you doing this fine, Deanie D? That'll be $5, Spoon. Fine. God, get me out of here. I need to see my rock. The rock has been cheating on the both of you. There is no God. Only Zool. I... I... I actually have nothing. Audio. No. I don't know what the fuck just happened. It's all love at an industry that never learns anything, tee hee hee. During a conversation between me and the captain as to how we'd go about making a Sailor Moon reboot, Robbie wanted Serena to be a fully grown adult ass kicker instead of a 14 year old schoolgirl since he felt that the high school backdrop many an anime has been known for exists specifically to waste our time with characters sitting in a room doing absolutely nothing interesting. Wait, why did that little disclaimer say that this video is a fandom arson? I thought it said it was a deep dish review. Are they the same? Are they their own separate entities? Did The Rock really do it? We'll never know. First of all, George, get your grubby raccoon mitts off my rock. It's my rock. I'm the one that gave The Rock life. More importantly, oh hi, zero punctuation ripoff. How are you doing on this, um, mayonnaise joke? On top of perhaps one of the worst British accents I've ever heard, Last I checked, Sailor Moon knew how to balance itself out from day-to-day -day stuff like school and its action when it came to whatever the villain of the week was. Hell, in some cases, the stuff that occurred at the school would also tie into the action parts. A perfect complement to what he calls the precursor to the laziness glorification vehicle we call gassy temperatures. Huh, that's weird. What are you doing here, Stairfax temperatures? Looks like I'm not the only one who knows how to channel JonTron. Difference being that I come up with original content and only emulate the delivery. What the fuck are you doing? We'll explain our fruity little plan for Sailor Moon some other day, but this talk has got me thinking. How is it that high school is often the escapist fantasy equivalent of kryptonite? It can't really be kryptonite if they have the potential of putting out some high quality stuff in a high school setting. I mean, have you not seen my life as a teenage robot? Well, it could be worse. After all, he could be trying to use a pure slice of life cartoon as an example of his point. Like maybe the abomination that is my life me? Now that would be- Well, I figured out that shows like these spend way too much time on high school drama than the escapist elements we actually come over to see. Really? Fucking really? Okay, first of all, my life me? Tell me, what is escapist about a pure slice of life show? Never mind the fact that My Life Me is pretty much a straw man for all lazy western animation, and not a good choice to show that the entire fucking setting doesn't work. But it doesn't even match the genre you're talking about. Oh, but then there's the focus on being taken away from the escapist elements. Since you don't clarify what escapist means other than the channel you're ripping off, let me just define it based on what the context of this whole review seems to present it as. An element that would not be present in the real world, like one involving science fiction, fantasy, or in the case of some superhero shows, both. Besides just Sailor Moon, which integrates the less action-oriented scenes with the escapist elements by showing how one affects the other, there's also Power Rangers. Now, I could just stop right there and say, your argument is invalid. I could list off hundreds of examples right fucking now. Or I could pepper examples throughout the video of shows that work and have the elements you described. Oh wait, I think I'll do both of the latter two! <gasps> anyway, to on to what Boone ranted about, how is it inherently bad that certain fantasy and sci-fi shows even take place or have a high school in it? By that logic, I can't like a haunted house being an everyday street with a giant sign that says, I scary, because it's out of place. Did we also mention that kids go to school and thus cartoon creators want to perhaps connect to their audience? I know, such an alien concept! Specifically because the bland and mundane things in life, like drama and shipping, are the easiest to write. Isn't that right, Annie McBeal? No, drama isn't an easy thing to write on like you think it is. It needs justified conflict. It needs full involvement between the characters. It needs to be interesting and not at all sappy, corny, or, well, 
badly written. As a writer who's worked with other writers, who the fuck do you think you are to tell us what is and isn't easy to write? There are plenty of writers who have an easy time writing drama like George R.R. R. Martin, and then there's writers like me, who do not write interpersonal drama well and are much better at writing wider scale or political conflict. In addition, writers can also have talents with different genres, because writing a comedy is different from writing a dramatic piece. And even then, writing slapstick is very different from writing dark comedy. So, no, it's not objectively easier to write any one genre, you fucking pedestrian bourgeois little piece of excrement. Do you want to know who's a good writer? My rock. You stay away from him! Son, what does bourgeois mean? Read a goddamn book! <laughs> nah, I don't have an issue with anything you said. It's just fun to punch you. Eh, fair. Say it ain't so, deep dish. I hear you cry hanging from my kneecaps. Please be gentle on Zero, Danny. No, you clod, it's Robbie who hates this show, not I. Besides, it ain't even on Nickelodeon. Wait, hold it. So, question, what does this all tie into? You do somewhat explain, but here's the issue. You talk about one subject, and then all of a sudden you decide to talk about another subject without any connection whatsoever. Dude, work on your writing on how to connect points together so that it flows better. Holy crap, this is A363 MTR commentates number 18 all over again. Also, what do you mean by it? If you meant Danny Phantom, then eh, too easy. If you meant by Robot Jones, then uh, I guess that's a quote-unquote connection. But my previous point still stands because first of all, why did you bring up Danny Phantom? And second of all, the transition is fucking horrible. Oh, and as for the Nickelodeon comment, Eh, also too easy. But MTR, everyone knows that Viacom is part of the Illuminati. Oh please, as someone who's planning on using Bill Cipher as an avatar, it's safe to assume that I'm part of the Illuminati too. And let me tell you that Nick isn't one of them. Uh, though apparently Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are both part of the group. This entire Illuminati joke is fucking stupid anyway. Eh, why not? By the way, you see that drama or other certain scenarios are incredibly easy to write? Yet you don't know Basic Writing 101 for this review. GG. The episode begins with body measurements. The toss of the class get drafted in for the basketball team while the puny ones get carted off for crab soccer. Whatever the hell that is. They show it. In the very next scene. How fucking dense are you? How can you not know what crab walks are? Crab walks are a simple exercise where you just walk on all fours with your back towards the ground. How do I know this? Simple. I did this fucking exercise in elementary. And even then, could you not have done any sort of research about it before writing the review? Research? Pfft. Who needs that when you've got some guy who sounds like he just got out of bed making witty and insightful commentary? I mean, just sound like you care for just a minute. By the way, crab soccer is an actual thing. Hell, we did something similar for certain practices in high school soccer. Granted, not to the extreme exaggeration that the show uses, but it's not like a cartoon would ever have any sort of exaggeration of things that happen in real life whatsoever. I swear to God, I hope you're ready for what could be the longest final thoughts of my life. I quit. You're not editing this. Oh. Never mind. And it's winter, because basketball season. Get down on all fours, robot! Let's see some crab hustle. Damn, he must have watched this video and got bored. To death. <laughs> I, I'm funny, right guys? No. Now give me my rock back. Immediately you see the cracks within the concept of the show. It's a lone robot in a normal human high school. Technically, it's a middle school, but they're so close together I may as well count it here. First of all, fuck you! High school and middle school are not basically the same thing. It's not like there's more signs of physical development in middle school, and thus the growth spurt premise of this episode wouldn't work in a high school setting at all. And if it did, it would be a stretch, no pun intended. That's just one example of why a middle school and high school setting work differently. Never mind the fact that some middle schools also use a class setup more similar to an elementary school as well. And if the important aspect is that it's a school setting, why not just call it a school setting? Second of all, so an abnormal person in a normal school is automatically bad? 
Hmm, let's see. You must really want my fucking list then! Invader Zim, Symbionic Titan, most versions of Spider-Man if he's not working in a normal office, Star vs. the Forces of Evil, original Powerpuff Girls, no matter what you think of the 2016 version, Dexter's Laboratory, Cow and Chicken. You're right, Ernie. This is fun. I know, right? I wanna have fun. Why do people keep producing animated TV shows set in these generic high schools? It's not a very interesting place to set a show. It's dreary and sterile, the people there are unpleasant, and you forget about it the minute you graduate. In fact, there's only one name I can remember from high school off the top of my head, and that's simply because she was an otaku anime girl, I guess. That's funny, I remember lots of people from high school. And I graduated in 2005. And I really don't like using this argument because of the stigma according with even saying the words associated with this, even with the overall fact that I've already said this to you in commentary number 18. But, it's a kid's show. Yes, yes, I know you can review a kid's show to you, but maybe, just maybe, the show wants to relate to its target audience a little bit, especially with the setting being at a high school. After all, Superman works a desk job. And don't even get me started on the damage it dealt to the captain's sanity. RJ and Sox flaunt their placement on their respective teams with predictable response. The handicapped girl Shannon drops by much to Jones' delight, but naturally she ignores him because the dude's hella small. They watch the first game of the season when, really? These jerks are in their late teens. Why put those puny munchkins alongside those lunks of homber? Clearly, yet another way the system's rigged the world from cradle to grave. I don't really see where this joke is even going. I checked the Wolfpack website and it's apparently a political website, and I don't even know how this even relates to the joke of tall people blocking the character's view of the game. Also, high image that gets used to represent corporate greed in Jim Sterling's videos? Not even the last time that you steal Jim Sterling shit. I don't know what the fuck just happened. I should probably mention the mess that got this show sunk. Originally, they used Macintosh Jr. for the voice of Robot Jones, and it perfectly fit. A little on the cheap side, yes, but as the NSCL put it, it can be a brilliant idea for a cheaply made animated show. I I'm sorry, cheap animation? Yeah, no. No, the animation is not cheap. Why? Because this show uses cell animation. You know, how animation used to be done? And this show came out in an age where cartoons switched to digital animation. And guess what? Cell animation is more expensive than digital animation. How can it be cheap when it's actually pretty expensive? And I'm sorry, you think Bobby Block is the reason the show got canned? Um, no. Well, there was a lot of executive meddling that made Greg Miller leave. The recasting, as it were, of Jones wasn't even the tip of the iceberg on that. Never mind the fact that it's actually a decision I personally agree with. You're probably not aware of the fact that this show was thrown around the schedule so much that it may as well have been the typical Brock Lesnar opponent. Or the fact that this show wasn't even Cartoon Network's choice. They put a viewer poll out to decide which of the pilots would get greenlit, and Robot Jones won that poll. In other words, the people got it on the air, but it got the Invader Zim treatment, shafted in ways that had nothing to do with changing a voice actor. This could have been the end of it, but judging by the voice you're currently hearing right now... Hello, Shannon. I need the crab soccer team. Your body type is too large for team unit. That's right! Executive meddling strikes again! They thought that having synthetically voiced characters was way too weird. Yeah, try saying that to Hatsune Miku. So they swapped it out with Bobby Block, going as far as to redub the first season. Damn! Not to knock the kids' voice talents, but Judith Barzi, you ain't. Bless her soul, fuck Konami. Oh, so that's why you played the incredibly non-contextual Metal Gear clip. So you could justify saying fuck Konami. This is a repeat of my 18th fucking commentary, like holy fucking shit. Okay, I'm not gonna fault you for not playing any clips of Macintosh as Robot Jones. I'll let my co-op partners tell you why the fact that the clips of original show with Macintosh aren't very high quality isn't an excuse. But I will say, once again, I actually like Bobby Block. Yes, using Macintosh has its own charm, but if we were to actually play something with the audio... Your mission, watch whatever happened to Robot Jones. Premieres Friday at 9.30 on Cartoon Network. 
you might be able to hear the Macintosh Jr. voice doesn't sound all that childlike. And Robot Jones is supposed to be a child. And honestly, it works giving Robot Jones a new voice to add some more emotion. And even then, the voice itself still sounds semi-robotic, so there's no harm done. Naturally, growth spurts aren't really a thing for robots unless you count upgrades and such. So Jones takes matters into his own hands. That's funny. I could actually say the same thing about your usage of media clips. I'm feeling that at least to me, the joke is being dragged out a bit too long. Also, those clips in that specific sequence might have been taken from somewhere. Damn you, Eck! <laughs> what just happened? I don't know what the fuck just happened. He's having robot puberty. Robots don't have puberty. Sure they do. No way. Personally, I kind of agree, because between you and me, the idea of robot puberty bugs me. No matter how hot it sounds. Don't show that image again! Ever! Except in your personal time, of course. Why the hell did you punch me? I didn't do anything! At least not this time. Well, I had to punch something. Eh, fair. Because The Rock said so. The Rock says you're a jabroni! After a trip to the principal's office, we cut to the big basketball game of the episode. Whilst cheering on socks, another growth spurt occurs, leading to him making the team as a scab of sorts. Robot with your legs so tall, help us win at basketball. That's not what a scab is, because a scab is someone who works in place of someone who's on strike. Who went on strike exactly? Did The Rock go on strike? You leave The Rock out of your John Tronning. George, The Rock was sickly cheating on you. With me. And also Ernie. God, I have to pick out a positive from this show, don't I? The art style's pretty damn decent. It has this sort of schoolhouse rock kind of vibe if you're into that kind of stuff. It's a bit on the ugly side, but with a show as cheap as this one, you better take what you can get. Alright, this might be nitpicky for me, but there's only like three minutes of the review with an additional two minutes of the credits that we will cover, and now you only talk about the animation. Honestly, this should be talked about earlier since this is actually the biggest main aspect of the show itself. This could technically also be said about the voices being different between the two seasons of the show. But no! In the beginning, all I could do was talk about Sailor Moon because that cartoon has got the boom and anime babes that make me think the wrong thing. Hey! Music jokes are my shtick! How can I help it if I think you're funny when you're- OW! Ow! What the hell was that for?! Really? Motherfucker. He plays well for a robot, so well in fact, that he ties the game in the second half, leading to trouble from the visitors. Does Jones pull through? Of course he does! It wouldn't be a generic high school plot without the good guys winning. Hey, you know what's funny? Tropes aren't bad is a trope. Because, you know, tropes aren't automatically bad. Plus, I see where you're trying to come from, but the problem is you say that it's a cliché that the good guys win every time, when the cliché here is, they win at the last second. Even then, there isn't really any dramatic tension within the scene at all. It's more so played to progress the plot. And at the end of the day, don't you want the good guys to win? Do you? I mean, the show hasn't given you an excuse not to as far as I can tell. But how does he learn the episode's moral? Hello, anybody? I In the final seconds of the episode! Up yours, Cartoon Network. Up yours. Okay, first of all, the data log entry isn't even when he learns the lesson. He learned his lesson about the growth spurts at the point you asked how he was going to learn his lesson. You know, when his head flies through the roof? And this would be something more important if this were a morality-based show. It's not. In fact, the closing scene is played for laughs right down to the gag of Jones getting hit with the satellite after finishing his data log entry. Also, how is it bad that they learn it at the end? It doesn't really take away from the episode at all, and honestly complaining about it feels pointless. Usually it's told at the end, as simple storytelling goes. Final analysis, my original body size is best.
Okay, let me add him. You did not take a fucking clip from Digi Valentine. The other times you tried to imitate it in some way, but here, you just flat out stole a clip from him. Fuck off. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Oh, baby, a triple. I can understand why the aforementioned YouTube channel NSCL. Oh, hi, Mr. Enner! I wasn't expecting to see you in this video! I figured Alex was too busy ripping off semi respected YouTubers! By the way, I've been waiting to tear this screen right here to shreds for the entire fucking video. So let's start with your enter ripoff scorecard and the temperature of the episode. You have a key here, but if you're going to give it a goddamn score, why not just use a goddamn score? It accomplishes the same goal and you in no way incorporate this temperature concept into the review in any other way. It's just arbitrary. Kind of like your enter graph. Okay, so the only thing I can get out of this at all is that the blue bars mean negative points and the red bars mean positive points, which, again, extra complication that serves no purpose, but fine, whatever. Would make sense if it were the other way around, if not for the temperature thing. Seriously, why are you using the temperature thing? But why are the values a minus two? You said nothing about any actual values. The only thing you said was that you didn't like the pacing of the quote-unquote moral that wasn't even a fucking moral. You are aware that a show doesn't have to teach morals in order to have good values, right? And then there's your little text blurb. You said there's no real heart put into the show unlike breadwinners. <sighs> you know what? No, saving it for my final thoughts. Oh, the cheat for my rock is not pleased with your reference. Didn't want to recommend this show to anyone. The setup makes this show way too predictable for any payoff to properly function. The characters are archetypes we've screened way too many times before. And it's overall so bland and unwatchable that I actually feel like I'm doing an injustice even putting it on the list. Give Space Pirate Mito some credit because at least it does new concepts on top of the usual anime high school superhero tropes. Robot Jones isn't even an anime. You want a real anime? You should watch Seinfeld. And Breadwinners does new concepts all the time. And at least you could make out what sort of characters our casts are supposed to be in the Ratchet and Clank movie, but this show is on par with Johnny Test. Wait, Teach, can you slow down? You're cramming too much in and it's not really to your advantage. Will this be on the final exam? Did you just... Barely a pub... Final thoughts? Nope. Fuck it. But unlike Johnny Test, its cancellation after two seasons was mercifully swift. I mean, hey, if you like it, that's perfectly understandable, because the way I see it, I know every show has its fans. Oh, hi there, Search for the Worst! What are you do- Nope. Nope. Not. Final thoughts. Oh, looky here. Hi, I hate everything. How you doing today? Do you hate yourself yet? Of course he does. Look at what channel he's on. And I've stood at least one reason why, but I wouldn't mind to see another data log entry during the middle bar of the search for the worst. Well, Cartoon Network realized that putting an Anna Place Extraordinary in a mundane and ordinary setting it was utter drug to begin with, so they took the Galaxy High approach and slapped a normal human into an extraordinary school. An animal school, if you will, and thus my gym partner as a monkey was born. But wait, doesn't that count as a cartoon in a school setting? So really, my gym partner as a monkey falls under this particular category you call... a problem. Hey, Boone told me to tell you guys something. It was something about, I don't know, final thoughts or something. I wasn't really paying attention. Why are you still here? Members only, bitch! Hopefully Robbie won't come banging on my door to make me review an episode of this show because I find it perfectly okay. But what they didn't learn was why such a premise is flawed to begin with. It makes for predictable television. You know what? No, I'm gonna save mine for my final thoughts. I originally didn't want to have the final thoughts, but fuck it. The point here actually made me want to have one. Fuck everything, I'm going with Boonslayer. And then there were two. It's just you and me now, George! I think you mean you, me, and my rock. You may have mild psychological issues. Teacher told me that there was going to be more on the final essay. I, I can't fail this class. In case you're wondering, yes, we are proper pissed that the Papa Girls reboots tossed our favorite trio in the middle school without even bothering to age up the designs. Um, I'm sorry, but what, dude? They aren't even in middle school, it's an elementary school. 
I guess you could make the argument it's a combination of an elementary and middle school, but either way, bro, I explain in the same episode that preschool got destroyed, which is why the girls are even, like, here. Wow, I didn't know rocks were surfers. Well, maybe a certain kind of wave, if you catch my drift, bro. Sure you wave? Dude, I'm talking about weed. I know Bob Boyle has done a lot better with Yin Yang Yeo, but I have a feeling that I'm going to have to ask TV's Kyle to give you the talk. Like, have him just walk up to you and say, Most women, most human females. But that's Mr. Enter. Oh, hi, Mr. Nope. You have to say something eventually. Final goddamn thoughts. The majority of the female population has them in some form. And, you know, the species, actually, no, the entire mammalia class of animals wouldn't exist without without them. I like Comic Con! Flash. Honest to God, these are probably the worst end credits I've ever seen. And there's a problem when someone has to point out the fucking end credits! Notice how multiple screens flash for maybe a second or two with Patreon and some other crap, but pauses long for social media and nine other videos with, get this, no annotations. What is the point of having those if you're not going to provide annotations? There's not even any tiles on the nine videos, so if someone was somehow interested, they probably wouldn't know what the fuck they're trying to find. Oh, and as for that Patreon, <laughs> don't expect that to go anywhere if your content quality remains how it is. Also, I get for the fact that you want to draw everything, but brah, for the logos of the other websites on the top left, you do realize that PNGs exist because holy crap, look at that fat bybird. Oh, and before you argue, I'm pretty sure that you didn't draw sans. Oh, and adding on to Ernie's point, they don't have annotations as well. Yes, you do place in the usernames for your social media accounts, but trust me that it's easier for your overall audience. Wait, MTR, I thought you said only final thoughts. George, I told you, I can't fail this test. Okay then. Anyway, for one last thing to point out is this blurb near the end. Please ignore the official release. In this case, no, you'd be wrong on that. So wrong since Robot Jones is at least considered a decent show with a following. Ignoring... whatever the hell that ending was. So guys, what are your thoughts? Alex, I've known of your existence for about two years at this point in time and you've hardly changed a damn thing about your content and holy crap do you need a major refresh. Your arguments are so unfocused that it got pulled over for drunk driving on top of being total horseshit and you're the Carlos Mencia of cartoon reviewers. Honest to God, when I first discovered of your existence, I thought your content was crappy, but at the same time, part of me was thinking that eventually you'd carve out your own unique identity to at least stand out from the crowd in some fashion, but that was stupid of me. Take me, for example. I've taken in feedback from multiple people, including my peers in the commentary community, as well as find my own audience that helps me climb up the subscriber ladder, which is at almost 4,000 as I speak, and more importantly, have a much better like to dislike ratio than your videos. Oh, and I try to be different and not like multiple other people. Sure, my transitions are done with the Law and Order-esque sound effects, but it's something that hasn't been done by a reviewer as far as I'm aware. You just take whatever the fuck you find and just lazily slap it into your videos. That shit's disgusting, dude. Whew. Boy, does it feel good to finally say all of this in a video. For my thoughts, well... Alex, this is the second time I've tackled you overall, and honestly, this was a lot worse from your last one. It goes from the complaints about high school settings that have little to do with the show you're reviewing, your confusing points, and how you literally either take people's jokes or in case with Digi Valentine, outright steal. The only advice I can really give is, listen. Listen to what people like Booner and T are asking you, and please don't ignore it. Otherwise, your videos will remain the way they are. Mine might be the shortest of the bunch. Also, I'm keeping an eye on your Kingdom Hearts reviews, don't fuck it up. Okay, now like I said earlier, originally I actually do not have any final thoughts at all, and I did not want to have any final thoughts at all. Unlike George here, this is actually my third time tackling you, and originally I didn't think that I would bring up any new points to say here, but I actually have one. This is shocking to me, but I actually do have one. And that's what's the point about how you thought that my gym partner, a monkey, was why such a premise was flawed to begin with and how it makes for predictable television. That's actually got me into thinking with not only the conversation that me, 
Boonslayer, Ernie, George, and a few other people had with a private Skype conversation that I had with your friend Robert Walker, as well as with the other two videos that I made on YouTube. I've noticed that you're being way too strict within your reviews. Actually, the both of you are too strict. You and Robert Walker here. I mean, who cares if there's a cliche or a trope within the episode? Who cares if one of the turtles are quote-unquote having relationship with a human when it's actually a kid's show and that kids won't really think about it that way? Who who cares if something happens in this special that doesn't affect the show in the same franchise? Who fucking cares if there isn't a story-driven show these days? My advice is for the both of you to actually try to see the positives in the show or anything along the lines like that. And if for some weird reason that you're not going to take not only what I have to say on you, but what other people have to say on you when they made their commentaries on you, then I'm sorry, but I simply have given up on you. I don't really see you improving on your overall videos whatsoever, so part of me is saying, why bother trying to fix something that doesn't want to be fix themselves. So, you two do you. Just don't complain to me when someone decides to make a commentary on you or make a comment saying that they don't like your videos because you decide to not change and improve your work. I don't want my audience to actually do that shit and I'm looking at you Joe Crusher Pickles with your Alexander K. Ford hate agenda, but don't be surprised if someone actually does that shit. Okay, so my audience probably already know some of my major pet peeves. You know, Rip-off artists, people who omit the other side of the argument when they could at the very least address that it even exists, and general dishonesty. And that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to problems with this video. Even your fucking icon is a rip-off of Rebel Taxi. I'm starting to wonder if you have an original idea in your fucking brain. You completely ignore shows where the school setting works and completely ignore anyone else's point of view in regards to how much they remember of high school. Pro tip, just because you have no social life doesn't mean other people didn't have one. Fuck, I was pretty much a loner out of necessity in middle school, and I still relate to Robot Jones' small group of friends. Actually, I relate to Robot Jones a lot. Most of my life, I've felt like an outsider in a more normal world. Hell, it's taken years for me to find people I feel like I'm the same species as, so I'm probably the exact target audience they were going for. The people on the fringes of whatever society they happen to be a part of. And yeah, maybe that's not the most marketable group of people, but who hasn't felt like an outsider in their social circle before? And then there's the general dishonesty. You call one of the last traditionally animated shows on television cheap, when the reason traditional animation has been phased out is because of how not cheap it is. The animation is fluid and, at least to me, looks good. I'm not even going to fault you for saying the art style is a little on the ugly side, as I'd be telling you how refined my butthole is compared to yours. But fuck, you do that with your audience anyway, don't you? <laughs> and then... There's that last little blurb of text you place there. Let me explain why I don't give a fuck if this is supposed to be a joke. See, the reviewer's job is not to tell people that what they're reviewing is garbage and that the viewer should not look for themselves. The reviewer's job is to provide their own opinions. And you know what? If you don't want to recommend this show, that's your business. But this is on your production splash screen. It doesn't matter if you don't like the show. The placement of the statement means that if you are trying to joke, you are instead directly insulting the people who put their hard work and dedication into the project that you are reviewing. I have never seen a reviewer outright attack the very essence of a show in a manner like this. Not even Mr. Enter would stoop this fucking low. My advice, go fuck yourself. <sighs> Damn, son. Well, that settles that. Well, MTR, it looks like the debt you owe me is officially... <laughs> okay, that is clearly domestic abuse. I will see you in court. <laughs> By God, he slapped the shit out of him! Mr. Mature, you leave me and my barbecue sauce no choice. I hereby sentence you to do another quad up with the Boon Slayer! The Boon Slayer! The Boon Slayer! Hey, George. You want the last line? You've barely said anything. Have at it. Well, alright then. 
Well... Oh, I thought the video was gonna end before I could talk. What I was about to say was...